Hi, this is Jeremy, back for another exciting CAD video. Ha, I hope they're exciting. I'm going to talk about XREFs today. Um, yeah, that's kind of a weird word, right? That's not really a word. XREF uh, is shorthand for external reference, but you often see it abbreviated as XREF in terms of uh, the CAD term. So uh, a lot of people call it XREFs for short, so uh, you'll get used to that very quickly. Um, just a little background on what XREFs are about, and then I'll dive into uh, kind of how they're typically used. So the theory aspect of XREFs is very important um, because it's one of the um, functions of AutoCAD that is commonly uh, overlooked by uh, casual users, but um, critical to professional users uh, on an everyday basis. So it kind of separates people that are casual from those that have professional background or experience in using AutoCAD. The idea of an external reference is um, the linking between CAD files. That's it. It's, it's very common because projects at architecture, engineering, and other types of design firms typically have much more than one or two CAD files on a project, unless it's very small. I have worked on some of those small ones too, but a medium size or larger project will have anywhere between 5 to 20, 30, 40, 100 different CAD files that make up the entire project. And uh, that allows a few things. One, it allows different people to work on the project because one person can work on plans, someone else can work on sections or details. And it also keeps the files a manageable size because otherwise they would become cumbersome in terms of file size. You also don't want to put all your eggs in one basket in terms of file security either. So there are lots of different reasons why it's important to not put all of your file components in one file if it's a larger project. It's fine on a smaller project. So that's kind of the idea of how it works. Um, I want to go over it's a little bit more theory in terms of how many firms use external references. And that's displayed in this diagram. So let's say that there are uh, five CAD files on a uh, smallish to medium sized project. So there would be the those five CAD files are named here in white text. Uh, one might be the plan and one might be the title block. And then those, those are linked to and inserted into the floor plan sheet file, a ceiling plan sheet file, and a roof plan sheet file. So by doing this, all the plan components can be drawn in one CAD file and then linked to these three separate sheet files to where the plan is updated, the other three sheet files get automatically updated at the same time. So that's another clear advantage to using XREFs is the links stay continuous. So as changes or revisions are made, then the, all the other files that are linked to that uh, external reference file are going to be constantly updated at the same time. Title block is usually used as an external reference for the same reason. Because uh, imagine if you had 100 sheets, meaning um, 100 different uh, layouts that have a sheet number and a title, etc and then maybe the name of the project changes because the client decides they don't want to call it Bob's Warehouse now. They want to call it Bob and Joe's Warehouse because he's got a partner. So you don't really want to have to go to 100 different paper space tabs and change the name of the project. So by having that title block as an external reference, you can make the change once, and then it ripples through all the layout tabs instantaneously. So that's the kind of reason that external references are very commonly used in the field. So I'm going to go over how to attach the external reference, and then I'll get into uh, an example of how it works in this type of situation of uh, having multiple files linked between um, sheets and what are often called bases or references. So to demonstrate how the actual linking process works, I have a, uh, a new empty CAD file saved in the same folder as the file that I'm trying to link to it file management is very important to keep in mind when you're working with external references uh, because the file link connection is dependent on the folder relationship and the names of the files so if you let's say moved one of the files out of the folder that it was originally uh, in when it was linked then it's not going to find the um, file when it tries to load next time you open it so you have to keep that in mind be very careful with your file management and your file naming so in this particular example, I have um, a group of CAD files that are part of an actual project that I'm going to show you as an example. And then I've saved a sample drawing here in the same folder 
so I can external reference uh, link in a title block to show you an example of how the process works. So if I were to rename one of these, then that link is not going to work anymore and I have to fix it. Or if I were to move one out of this folder, then it would not work anymore and I'd have to fix it. So you have to be careful about that when you're working with Xrefs. To open uh, the Xref manager, I'm going to type XREF and space or enter. And that opens uh, the Xref manager, which acts as a palette in the newer versions of AutoCAD. So the first uh, file that's shown here is the actual file that you're in right now. So it's not an Xref. This is the file that you're currently in. Uh, mine's just named sample drawing because I named it that way to do the demonstration for you. So you can uh, see any files that are separate um, will be listed here that are linked, I mean. So that uh, reply applies to CAD files and also images. Like if you have a, uh, a JPEG scan that you've scanned in and you want to trace over it or something like that, then that would also show up here as well as an external reference. Up at the top, you have a couple icons, and one of them is Attached Drawing. If you hit the little arrow next to that, you can see uh, you use the same um, pull down to get to Attach Image or other types of overlays that you can bring in, like a PDF. So I'm going to hit Attach Drawing. And then I'm going to locate the file that I want to attach. And in this case, I'm going to attach a floor plan. So I'm selecting that file that I'm attaching, and then I'll hit Open. And then you have some important options come up that you want to uh, kind of slow down and think about for a minute. The first is the insertion point. Do you want to insert at the 0, 0, 0 point in, in your drawing space, in model space? The answer is sometimes. It depends on what you're bringing in. If you're bringing in a floor plan, a lot of times it's good to bring it in at 0, 0, 0 so that the position of the plan in the original file is the same as the position of the plan in this host file. But there are other times when it's really necessary to move that plan around, so then the relationship is no longer the same. It's usually good to leave it at 0, 0, 0, at least for right now, until you decide that there's a specific reason that you need to move it. The other important items to uh, check here are the path type, relative versus full. And that refers to um, whether the uh, AutoCAD link is going to remember the exact specific path of the uh, certain drive and then the folder uh, after folder after folder that your files are stored in, or if it's simply a relative path, which means if it's in the same folder, the only thing it's going to remember is the file name. Relative path is usually a safer route to go because if you were to move these two files, let's say from the C drive to the D drive or the maybe your portable flash drive and then you want to open it up on somebody else's computer, as long as they're in the same folder, then everything's going to load properly. If you have the uh, specific full path or hard path chosen and you move those files to another drive, then they may not load properly. Um, AutoCAD's gotten a little smarter about that, so they probably will, but it's safer to choose relative path. Take note that in order for relative path to work, you must have just saved the drawing that you're currently in prior to attaching the XREF. So if it doesn't work or gives you an error, that's usually the reason why. My uh, last suggestion here is a reference type. I'm going to choose overlay, and normally that's the best choice to make. The only time that you would need to do the attachment specifically is if you're attaching three files together in a uh, consecutive fashion, like A is attached to B, and then B is attached to C. If you want A to show up in C, then you have to choose attachment. Otherwise, it's usually simpler to choose overlay. So you can uh, rewind and listen to that again if it didn't make sense. But So I'll hit OK. And now it's showing the plan in the background. And then it lists the base here in my external references. It actually shows another file here that is not attached or it says not found. And that's because the uh, original base plan had a PDF overlay attached. So that's why that's there. I can just ignore it. Um, but it shows the XREF. And then the file is in the background back here the plan of the building. Now you have to keep in mind this just shows up here as a linked file so you're not going to edit it from here normally. Technically it's possible to but if you select it you can see it acts as a large block. So your editing would normally be done in the other file and then the updates will come back here when you make changes and save 
in the base plan. Okay, so now at the bottom, as long as you're in the XREF manager, you can select your XREF. In the bottom, you can see the path where the file is found. You can see the saved path. You can change that information right here if you need to. You can see whether it's an overlay or an attachment and change that here as well. So the XREF manager allows you to modify the link between your two files. If you select the XREF here, you can also right click and get to detach, which permanently breaks the link off. You can always reattach it, but I say permanently because there's a difference between unload and detach. Unload temporarily turns off the link so that the plan gets out of the way. If you want it to come back, then you just press reload. So again, I select the XREF, right click, and that's how I get to these options. Unload is just temporary. Reload will either refresh the link or bring it back if it's turned off or unloaded. Detach, again, breaks the link. You could reattach it, but otherwise it's a more permanent break. Bind will break the link but leave the file here, which then becomes a block. So hopefully those options make sense. If you want to actually open the file to edit it, you could choose open right here as well. So those are uh, easy, common options from the XREF manager. And then we can close this with the X when we're done. Now, as long as I'm linking, I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to go over to Paperspace and XREF in the title block. So I'm going to type XREF to reopen my manager. Hit Attach Drawing. Choose my title block and open. Um, verify that my settings are the same, which normally it will remember your last view settings. Hit OK. And then now my title block is here as well. So those are uh, the uh, that's so that's how you can attach an external reference. And then again, it will act as a block. So now if I want to make a change to that file, I can switch to that file either by opening it the regular way, or I happen to already have the file open and I just switch to it by using Control Tab. Now I'm going to make a change and show you how it allows you to update it. So I'm just going to draw a big X across the plan because I want to make a really obvious, easy change. And then I'm going to save the file. You have to save. Because if you don't, then the other file is not going to recognize the change. Now I can switch back to the file that has my XREF. And when I switch back, you will notice a cloud pop up at the lower right corner. It says the reference file has changed and may need reloading. And then I can click on the blue link and it will reload my XREF. So if I go back to model space, now you can see my large X has shown up in the other file. You can click, see there it is, it's still an XREF, but it has updated with the change. So I hope that makes sense. You can switch, make a change, come back to the host file, and then reload, and it will show the change, assuming you saved the file before you switched back and forth. Now, you don't have to uh, reload every time you make a change. Um, that's optional. Uh, only if you want it to update right away do you have to reload. Uh, the cloud, by the way, doesn't always pop up, but uh, there are several other options in how you can reload. You can select your file, right-click, and hit reload there, along with the other options. You can go to the XREF Manager and reload there. Uh, you can also right-click on the small icon at the lower right corner and hit reload drawing XREFs there, so you have several options. Keep in mind that every time you open a file that contains XREFs, everything will be reloaded automatically. So you don't have to reload every time you open. It will happen in the process of opening the file. So that's kind of the basic idea of how to attach an external reference. Now, you have to be careful while you're working on external references that you keep in mind which file you're currently in. And you can always tell by selecting your XREF. And you can see when it selects the entire XREF, that I'm in the host file, not the XREF file. And the other way to remember is to obviously watch your file name up at the top. So if I switch over to my base plan again, I can delete the X that I made just as a demonstration, erase that, I'll save this file once again, switch back, switch back to my host file, and then reload, and then the X disappears. So that's the basic concept of how you can uh, work with files that are linked and switch back and forth. Now, there are some more advanced tools, so I will need to do another external reference video later. But this shows you the basic concept of how to link a file 
and then you can always keep the two files updated at all times. So let's go back to the diagram here. So the common, so one common reason again that you would see external references in a firm used in this way is that the plan components, all the uh, ceiling, roof, and floor plan information is often drawn in one file on specific separate layers and then linked to these various sheets. And then in the floor plan sheet, you would turn off all the ceiling plan layers and the roof plan layers. And then in the ceiling plan sheet, you would turn off the floor plan layers and the roof plan layers, etc. The advantage to that is that if somebody wants to coordinate between the floor plan level and the ceiling plan level, like to line up a piece of furniture with a light fixture, let's say, then they can go to the floor plan CAD file, the main plan external reference file, and turn both of those layers on in the same file and then adjust whatever needs to be adjusted to align things. Save and then reload their floor plan and ceiling plan sheets and then everything will be updated. The same advantage with the title block again if the drawing uh, if the project title changes then that can be updated in all tabs. So external references can also be attached to a paper space layout. The only thing to keep in mind is the master original title block file has to have the title block in model space, preferably at zero zero point, in order for it to be linked as an external reference. So that's the only kind of weird point about that that you may not be used to. So the base title block lives in model space in this file, and then it gets extra to paper space in all of the host files. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions about XRFs, shoot me a message if you want because they can be a little confusing at first, and then look out for another video down the road that goes into a little bit more detail.